Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans. Well, as I've said many times before, this is the richest country in the world at the richest moment in history. But I think one of the real shames in the United States of America is income inequality, the disparity of how much the wealthiest people have and how much ordinary and certainly low-income people have, making it hard for most people to really feel that we are the richest country in the world. I was one of 70 members of Congress who voted against a $78 billion tax bill. And that is because most of the tax breaks went to the wealthiest Americans. I had been fighting along with a real champion, Rosa DeLauro, a congresswoman, to make sure that we would reinstate the child tax credit, which during the pandemic, one year, actually was able to give money to families and reduced child poverty by nearly one half in the United States. What a bargain that we could put money into the pockets of families and that they would spend it, which we expected and it was true, in a way that would make sure that their families, their children would be able to not be living in poverty. They would know where their next meal was coming from. Well, this legislation that I voted against, and I definitely, I admit, I was in the minority, would say that the wealthiest corporations would get a lot more than the children were going to get. And I thought, let's not do that again. During the Trump administration, there was about a $2 trillion tax cut that went to the wealthiest Americans. Let's reverse that, or at least make it equal and make sure that our families are getting what they need. As a consequence of this bill, companies like Meta, that was Facebook, that was their name, General Motors, and Netflix will essentially pay zero in taxes. While most Americans during, we're coming up on tax season, know that you're gonna pay more than zero for your taxes. So let me be clear, I'm gonna to continue to fight not only for children, but to make our economy more fair so that everyday people, if there are tax cuts to be given, let it be spread around, not just for the wealthiest. I had the pleasure of being in a press conference to move forward on the issue of one fair wage. Right now, there is a big difference between what people are paid, particularly in the restaurant industry. One of the people at this press conference, her name is Patty, and she has a restaurant in Edgewater called Herb Thai. Actually, it received one of the Michelin Awards. I haven't gone there yet, I look forward to it, and you might wanna check it out as well. And the woman that I've worked with for really a long time, she's a force of nature, Saru Jayaraman, has been organizing to make sure that restaurants do give one fair wage. Now, let me give you an example of the problem. In the United States of America, the minimum wage is $7.25. No one can live on $7.25, and it has not been raised since 2009. And believe me, there are places in the United States where minimum wage workers are getting $7.25 an hour. But worse than that, there is something called the tip wage. People who supposedly get a sufficient amount of tips, the tip wage right now in the United States is $2.13 an hour. I think originally the idea was that people who got tips would make up for the rest of the wage in those, in those tips. 
It doesn't happen. $2.13 an hour. So when we talk about one fair wage, we are talking about a really decent wage. So the city of Chicago last October raised the minimum wage, not just for restaurant workers, but for all workers. The minimum wage in Chicago is $15.80 an hour, which is really great. So I am supporting a piece of legislation at the federal level, the Raise the Wage Act, that would make the national minimum wage, $15 an hour. So we're, we're fighting for one fair wage and we are proud of the city of Chicago and making the good moves. I think by now, most everyone has heard, but not necessarily understands what artificial intelligence actually means. It's important, I think, that we do figure it out because there can be a lot of scams built into artificial intelligence. Right now, I am the sponsor of a bill called Are You Real Act. How many of you have gotten robocalls? You get robocalls. And now this legislation would require that if the so-called person on the other end of the phone is not a real person, but is really just created through artificial intelligence. You have to be told. So this is all part of an effort to make sure that inappropriate robocalls are held more under control. The chairman of my big committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee, Frank Pallone, has a number of bills but mine is the RU Real Act. So at least you'll know you're talking to a, a real person. Let me give you an example of what happens when you are not. There is a scam that has existed before where you get a call that says your child, your daughter, your son is in deep trouble, needs to have immediately X number of dollars. It can be a lot of money in order to make sure that they get the help that they need. Well, now with artificial intelligence, you can actually get the voice of your loved one so that you are really certain, you feel certain that that is your child and you better act. They can do the, the voice, they can do the face. And so that is why making sure that you know if this is not a real person, on the opposite end of the line could help avert those scams. One of the committees that I'm actually not on, the health subcommittee, I decided to sign on as a, what they call a wave on, so that I could participate in the debate. Because of course, healthcare is so important, it's getting more expensive. And often, well, you can't trust it enough. I raised the issue of Medicare Advantage. This is what you see on television all the time. Medicare Advantage, you can call this 800 number. Now that 800 number is not getting you to Medicare, traditional Medicare. It is taking you to someone who is selling you private insurance. The fact of the matter is that Medicare Advantage is overcharging the federal government by $140 billion a year. In other words, we are paying more to Medicare Advantage than we do to traditional Medicare. And if we would take that money back from Medicare Advantage, we would have enough money for traditional Medicare, regular Medicare, to provide eyes, ears, and dental care. And I think that's exactly what we ought to do. But besides this overcharging, we are getting calls in our office, maybe you've experienced yourself, where under Medicare Advantage, healthcare is actually denied. A doctor may prescribe for you a procedure or a medication, and Medicare Advantage says, oh no, no we don't cover that. We're not going to do that. Tens of thousands of people are affected every year 
because what they need was denied by Medicare Advantage. So I am working with a number of my colleagues in the House of Representatives to try and actually at least make it easier for people to get out of Medicare Advantage. One of the problems is it's not so easy to just remove yourself and then go to regular Medicare. Changes need to be made. We can't have price gouging when it comes to health care. And now, let me just wish everybody a happy Black History Month. Take the opportunity to learn more than you have before, to make sure that you celebrate this because we value the diversity in this country. And also coming up is the Lunar New Year, the year of the dragon. So let's all put our arms together, our hands together, and celebrate with one another in this great diverse United States of America. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.